So let's go to the New Testament. Romans 1 verse 16 says, and we'll read it to the end of the verse, unlike many other places that they cut it in the middle. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Now some of you must be moving unpleasantly in the chairs and say, come on, Liron, you're, you're so tendentious. We got your point, back off. But I want to remind you a few things. A, is that thankfully, and I'm sure you're grateful for that, I didn't write this book, okay? I, I'm not the author of the Bible. And this is what God is telling us through his servants. And I want to remind you that God's goal was to bless every family of the earth through the seed, through Yeshua, who came from the Jews, through the gospel. The gospel, and there's nothing we can do about it, came through the Jewish people. And it came first for the Jewish people. Now, the replacement theology, which I mentioned before, is basically a fruit of the church. Sometime along the history, the church uh, decided to change things and the replacement theology was born. So if it is the fruit of the church, we need to go back and see what the fathers of the church taught. And someone already mentioned before, the father of the church, Peter. So let's see what Peter said. And if you remember, in the book of Acts, um, in chapters 10 and 11, there's this whole account about Peter standing on a rooftop in Jaffa, Jaffa in your Bibles, uh, which is near Tel Aviv today. Um, some believe this house still exists and you can go up on the second floor. I really doubt it's the same house. But the view is, is the same, it's right on the coast. And he was standing there and praying and suddenly this big um, sheet came down or, or sail in Hebrew we, we call it, fill it, filled with different animals. He was supposed to eat them. And then he was sent to Cornelius. I'm sure you remember this account. Then in Acts 10, verse 28, we read the following. And he said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. Wow. He actually says that until this moment, it wouldn't even cross the mind of a Jew to share any news, let alone good news, with a Gentile. It was unheard of. Then, Peter went on and shared it with his brothers in faith, who were shocked. We read it in Acts 11, verses 1 to 3, and then verse 18. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, you went to uncircumcised men and ate with them? This is awful, how could you do such a thing? You're a traitor. Well, then he took quite a time to explain to them, and we jump on to verse 18, where we read, when they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, then, to the Gentiles also, God has granted repentance that leads to life. Isn't that amazing? I mean, the debate in the first century was whether to give the Gentiles the, the possibility to hear the gospel or not. That was the debate. Today, it's the other way around. Now, there's a very important, tiny little word in this verse. In Greek, it's only three letters. It's called kai. And I'll read it again, and I'll emphasize it. Kai means also. Then to the Gentiles also, God has granted repentance that leads to life. It's not to the Gentiles instead of the Jews. It's not to the Gentiles only. It's to the Gentiles also. Finally, the followers, the followers of Christ in the first century who were all Jewish people accepted the idea that the gospel is also for all the families of the earth. Not just for the Gentiles, not just for the Jews, not one instead of the other, but also for both groups.